Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. So about a year ago, I made a few of these little like serving charcuterie tray things from some scraps from the sawmill. And since we're coming up to Christmas here, I figured I would make a few more. <laughs> so the majority of last year's trays were elm. This year's trays have a majority of walnut as well as some other species like birch, ash, and I do have one elm board here as well. So before we get started, I just want to say a big thank you to Case Knives for sponsoring this video as part of their Keeping Your Hands Sharp campaign. I'll tell you more about Case as well as their campaign later on in this video. So let's start making all of these. So to get started, I went out and raided the firewood pile. These are some pieces I cut up from the offcuts from turning a log, which is cylindrical, into something rectangular. One of the things I do like about this project is it allows me to kind of go through the stack and be a little nostalgic about the logs that these things came from. So one of the piles was getting towards the bottom and I found a bunch of these walnut pieces. These are from the very first chainsaw milling video that I ever did. So that means that these things have been sitting out on the firewood rack for about four years now. And you can see at this stage, they don't really look like much. <laughs> so the last time that I made these, I made a video about the overall process. That video more focused on the overall prototyping process didn't really have an idea of what I was making going into it, and the video is focused more on finding the design and just having some fun in the shop. I'm gonna switch things up this year and focus more on the batching side of things. So for this video, I'll be recording the full sequence of the entire process, so I'll be able to see exactly how long each step takes and be able to share that with you. So in every shot, I'll have the clock in place so you'll be able to see how long everything is actually taking. And this video is actually inspired by an email that I got from a viewer after I posted the original video. He was asking how long it actually took to make an individual tray, and I didn't really have a good answer for him. I guessed maybe 15 to 20 minutes, but when I'm recording my videos, I'm more focused on making the videos and not so much how long the actual woodworking process takes. So I don't really know how accurate that estimate was, but we're gonna find out for sure. So this first milling process is going to remove a lot of the waste material from these boards. They're all different sizes, thicknesses, and shapes. And since they're just sitting in a firewood rack, they're not going to be very flat. So I want to remove as much of the waste as I need to at this step because they're also too wet to actually use for projects right now. Checking the piece of the firewood with my moisture meter was giving me a reading of around 15% to 20% for some of the newer stuff. So the stuff is just too wet right now to use. So removing as much material right now is going to allow these things to dry a little bit faster. And once I have them all milled up, I can stack them in the shop and allow them to dry for a few weeks. So these have been sitting stacked in the shop for a few weeks and when I brought them in here they were reading about 16% or so and now they're reading about 7.5 to 8% or so. So that means things are ready to go and we can go through the whole milling process once again. Now one thing I did do is last night I came through and I did some epoxy fills in some places just to kind of clean things up a little bit so those are taken care of so we can mill them all down and not have to worry about any more epoxy. So I added another 20 minutes to the board and we will get back to the same exact process all over again. <laughs> the only difference this time is all we're doing now is just bring these things back into flat. As they've dried, they've distorted a little bit, as you'd expect. We just want to bring them back to being flat again. Some of the boards weren't totally all cleaned up as well, so some of them still have some roughs on marks on them. So at this point, we'll run through the entire milling process once again and take everything down to final thickness. Now, if you wanted to, you could plate these all down to one standard thickness. For me, I like a little variety, so I'm just going to plane them down to whatever thickness they end up being. So technically, they'll all be different thicknesses. So the next step is going to be to cut these down to final length, just trim up the ends, get rid of any dirt and checking and things like that. And what I like to do at this step is just kind of keep the goofy angle that might be already on the ends for when I cut this in the firewood. That way, things don't look super perfect. So I'm not necessarily going to put this thing up into the fence make that cut. I'll angle it whatever way it needs to go, stabilize it, and then feed it through so I keep some kind of odd angle on the end. I think that just gives a little more of an interesting visual look. So it's time to start firing these through this step. The 
Next, we're going to add the little under bevel here on the edges. That's going to make it easier to pick this thing up off the table. And to do that, I have the tall auxiliary fence on the table saw and my blade tipped. So this thing can be run vertically over the blade. I just used the one that I made last year to set the blade back up so it's tilted at 20 degrees and it's about 3 eighths of an inch away from the fence. So I can bring this stuff back over again and cut all of my little finger bevel thingies on all of the boards. So really that's about it for construction and from this point forward it's all finish prep and then finishing. So the edges need to be prepped as well as the faces. I'm going to go through and do all of the finish prep on the faces first and then I'll start to address all of the edges. <laughs> of course. So next I want to address these edges and some of them have the bark still attached to them and depending on how well attached the bark is, it may leave some of the bark on there. I know like for this for instance, this bark isn't going to just fall off. This is the same stuff I used to make my son's bed. So for the walnut at least, I'll strip away the outer bark and leave the inner bark which leaves a pretty cool pattern and uh, I really like it. So I'll use a draw knife to strip away the majority of the bark and then I'll blend it in back with a sander. Now that the sexy hand tool interlude is over, it's back to finish prep. <laughs> so I'm going to take these things to their final sanding grid of 180, and then I'll break the edges and soften things up by hand with some 180 grit sandpaper. This is a really tactile step, so I'm using my hands to feel for any kind of imperfections, sharp edges, things like that. And this is probably where a lot of time is going to go in the making of these boards. Hi, baby! Look at happy face. She loves me. So our kids are staying with our in-laws this week, so Lindsay and I just went out for a little date. <laughs> My belly is all full of carbonara, so I'm going to go through and finish all these up. So I just cleaned off all the boards with some compressed air, and now it's time for the last detail before finish. Go ahead and sign all of these boards. I'm pretty sure this is the most things I've signed in one sitting, besides the time I closed on my house. <laughs> so there we go, I got all the boards laid out and now it is time for finish, which is pretty super exciting. There's a lot of boards on here. I'm really excited to see the color and figure pop in them. There is a lot of interesting color and character for firewood. <laughs> so for the finish on these, I'm just gonna give them one heavy coat of salad bowl finish and that should be plenty for these things.
now the last step for these things is going to be to apply a little bit of a wax. I'm using this wax I got from the guys at SoCal Woodshop again. Same stuff that I used last year. And this wax is going to do two things. First of all, it's going to even out the finish a little bit. You can also achieve that by adding a second thin coat of finish on top of the first one just to even things out because the wood might absorb things at a little bit of a different rate. And adding that second coat will help to kind of even that out. And the other thing this is going to do is that since I'm buffing it out by hand, it's going to remove any dust nibs and just kind of smooth out the finish and make these boards feel super smooth. You could also achieve this by adding a second coat of finish, letting it cure for a few days, and then giving it a really light sanding with some high grit sandpaper. But since this is one of those Christmas is in a couple of days, I have to get these things done. Wax is going to be the best solution to get these things done in time. And done. <laughs> That's a nice stack of boards. So I'm getting ready to prep all the stuff for the glamour shots. And about a month ago, Case did send me one of their pocket knives. And I guess I could slice this super sata with a pocket knife, but today I'm feeling kind of fancy. So I thought we'd use the culinary knives to slice this stuff up. So nowadays it seems we only use our hands when we're trying to create the perfect Instagram post. But Case is challenging us to keep our hands sharp and create something using more than just our two thumbs. So with that in mind, this year I got it here and made all these serving boards for Christmas gifts. Now all my friends will have the most elegant food and cheese and meat and sushi plates ever. So I'm really happy with the way these turned out and it's really cool to think that these are just some pieces of firewood not too long ago and it was a lot of fun to be out here using my hands and making things. It's just, that's always fun. It's nice to be off the computer and kind of batching things out without worrying too much about the video. But speaking of that, let's talk numbers. <laughs> so I'll put the time breakups, breakups, breakdowns up here on screen for you. But it looks like it took me a little over six hours to make all of these and I ended up with 22 serving boards. Um, and some of them, the longer ones here, I have four of the longer ones. So 18 of the normal, I guess, single ones and then four of these long ones. So that breaks down to a total time per unit of 16 minutes and 38 seconds. I think that's pretty darn good. <laughs> this is definitely a really great project to use as some scraps. So if you do happen to have a sawmill like I do, I know you have more of these offcuts than you know what to do with. <laughs> and this is a great way to use up some of those, maybe generate some extra little gifts or some extra revenue if you want to sell them to, you know, at your store or at the craft fair or something. If you don't have these yourself and you might know someone with a sawmill, you could probably take a whole bunch of these little offcut things off their hands because they're probably up to their ears in them and they can't get rid of them fast enough. <laughs> At best, you'll get a whole stack for free. At worst, you'll pay firewood prices and that'll probably feel pretty much like free anyway. <laughs> and I guess the last option is to just buy a narrow slab and slice it up into your individual pieces and do it that way. That is uh, definitely a way of doing this project if you so choose to do so. <laughs> so I should be restocked on gift items for a while. Big thank you again to Case Knives for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out any of the knives that I showed in the video, I'll leave a link down in the description below, or you can check them out at caseknives.com. So thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the serving platters, anything here in my shop or anything at all, Please feel free to leave me a comment as well as to be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working.